at one mo at one point I was like, well, what am I going to do? You know, like, you know, what's, what's, where do I take this? You know, what's my next step? And that's when, um, the New York scratch master thing idea I had, I was like, okay, I want to do something like them, but I don't want to be like them. Cause I don't like, I like to get influenced. I don't like to do yeah. what someone else has done. Mm. So I was like, so at some moment I, I was like, Oh, wait a minute. What if, what if I put a, t a group together that's just all scratchers, mm -hmm. right? Rather than, you know, someone who's mixing and they're not, that, they're not as good as scratching, but they can mm -hmm. mix. Um, like, I need everyone to be elite. Mm -hmm. if, if I want to make this, I can't have, you know... I need an elite crew of just scratchers, no mixers. Obviously, like for me, if you're a badass scratcher, mm -hmm. you're already a master at mixing. Mixing is like okay. nothing. That's just like, you know what I mean? It, it's, we're musicians, so mixing is, you can you cannot mix for 50,000 years and you can still get back on it and still mix just as you did back That's when. That's like riding a bike. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you understand. So, um, um, See, we're lucky though, since we, you know, we started without sync. You know, the, pe the people that were born in the sync era, they're just some of them are like, Yeah, I never mixed a record in my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and <start> exactly. <laughs> um, but you, so you yeah, I uh, I went on the that quest. I was like, Well, that's never been done. I mean, how's that gonna sound like? Mm. so i had no idea what it, all i know is that it would it would be very special it's gonna mm. this is gonna be dope because what if you just have all elite scratchers in the group you know two to three guys it's like how where the hell am i gonna find that you know and, and a lot of these guys that i used to see scratching mm -hmm. um because there was there was a few groups in the city that that had sort of the same style of group Mentality where they just have one guy that, a couple of guys that makes, and then there's there's a, that that one guy that knows how to scratch out of all three guys, mm -hmm. you know. And there was some groups, and a lot of those guys, I, I, they either stopped. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of them got into bad drugs, whatever, mm -hmm. or just disappeared. Mm -hmm. So it was very very hard to find someone who was just straight hardcore just scratching. Literally, it was. I was like, great, I got this idea, but where am I going to start? And so it took a little while. Um, and it wasn't until um, um, until I find my, found my first scratch partner. I was like, mm. which was uh, Qbert. Cuba okay. was my very first scratch partner ever. Wow, okay. Um, so... What, what year was this? I'm going to say... Cause he started like in uh, what year was that? Eighty six. What year did he start? I it was eighty six. It's I think it's eighty six. I can't remember. Uh, eighty six, eighty. Um, because I can't remember the year he started. Um. Around the 86, 87, or something like that, around the, mm -hmm. that time. Um, but he had uh, came to my house because mm -hmm. we went to the same high school. Only he was, I think, a year ahead of me or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I stopped going to school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told my dad, I simply love music too much. Oh, well, wow. you're going to have to start working, and I'll go, all right, I'll work. <laughs> so I stopped at an early age. I, I, mm -hmm. I was 15 when I stopped mm -hmm. high school. Wow, wow that's so that's cool. when I pursued music but uh um so we lived in the neighborhood for a very long time I knew who he was for but I had no contact with him literally for like eight years because wow. he he just literally lived on the corner I lived down two houses away from him mm -hmm. and literally honestly he was a prick <laughs> I'm not gonna kid you even some of the some of the kids were like yeah he's a fucking dick so one day out of nowhere, I would mm. say about three o'clock in the afternoon. Ding ding. I was like, "All right, who's this?" You know, I, I wasn't expecting anybody. I was like, "Well, maybe it's from my mom, whatever." Mm. 
Mm. So I go downstairs and and I open the door and then to the downstairs and I'm like, I was like, first thing in my head, I'm like, what the hell is he doing here? It was, you know, it was Qbert and his partner who would later later on be his mobile DJ partner. Mm. And it was just them too. I'm like, huh, what's he doing here? You know, like, strange. Okay. I was like, Rich, right? I was like, what's up, man? Like, you know, um, what's up? What do you need? Where, mm-hmm. You know, why are you here? You know? And he goes, oh, I heard you DJ. I go, yeah. I go, why? What's up? Like, oh, um, no, I just wanted to see what you do because um, I'm sort of trying to get into it. Mm. And, he, and he had he had not started yet. Oh, wow. Is, he, he, yeah, he hasn't even started. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I mean, oh yeah, he hasn't even started, so he didn't even have one piece of gear yet. Mm. And um, he came over, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll show you what I do." I go, it, uh, I go, I try to ask him, "What is it that you've seen, right?" And uh, he explained that he's seen some kind of, I'm not sure if it was a competition or he was at a party where he he liked the DJ, what he was doing, whatever. Mm. So yeah, yeah, I go, that's cool. I go, I like mixing, but I really don't do that. I go, in my group, I'm called a cutter. I'm a scratcher. And he goes, like, what? I go, just sit down on my bed. I'll show you. So, and at that time, I had the 1650 Newmark. I remember mm-hmm. 1200s. And I was like, all right, so this is what I do, all right? I, I'm not going to show you mixing, probably what you've seen, but I'm going uh, I'm going to play a beat, and I'm going to scratch. Mm-hmm. He was like, okay. So I go, play the beat, and I just went off for, like, I don't know, five minutes. And I think I was playing clear mm-hmm. and I was scratching it's, I think, from uh, ah, Al Mafia. Yeah. I think. Either, it's either time, that or the French it's town. Time. It, it's, yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and, and when I stopped, I, I turned around and I can just tell his face was like completely blown away. Like, like what? The, like, he goes, that is. Like he was, he's like, oh, that shit is sick. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck? He goes, damn, dude, you're hella sick. Like he was just like, I was like, yeah, this is what I do. He go, he takes off, mm-hmm. right? And then the next day, you know, my doorbell rings again, right? So I'm mm-hmm. like, hi, right, who the hell is this, man? I go downstairs, it's him again. Wow. <laughs> Only he's by himself. Hmm. <laughs> he didn't want nobody to this is like him too he's if he sees something that he likes and he knows that no one else is seeing it, he's gonna want to just keep it to himself. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. that's how he is that's how he is and that was the first thing that clicked to me i was like oh i go what are you doing here he goes can i see what you did again <laughs> so i took him upstairs i did the same thing played a beat and they, i can't i think he might have stayed longer that day like 30 45 minutes he just he goes he just wanted to sit there and just see me just scratch mm-hmm and then two, three weeks later, that's when he started buying gear. Mm. He had started, you know, his first turntable, mm. et cetera. I, 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 I remember extremely clearly, like, from his beginning. I'm probably the only one in the world that has seen his beginning. Right, from the beginning. Yeah. And, and he, had, he got his gear, et cetera. Mm. Then, then he somehow, I guess I gave him my number. Because mm-hmm. then I started getting phone calls from him. He called me. He goes, hey, Lou, I finally got my gear. He goes, I got the mixer. Da, da, da. I go, mm-hmm. can, you, can you teach me a few things over the phone? So for like six months, seven months, he, drove me, he, he, he called me so much. My mom even started asking questions like, who is that calling mm-hmm. you so much? Even she was puzzled. She goes, why is he calling you all of a sudden? And he goes, you, uh, we've been living here for eight years. and." He's never made contact with you. Why now? What's he want from you? <laughs> you know, she was all like, I was like, no, no, you know, I'm just teaching him scratching, you know. Mm-hmm. So he would literally, he'd call me like about 10, 15 times a day. It was just like to the point where, oh, you know uh, what? Yeah. Let me just go to your house and just kick it. We'll, we'll just do a scratch, you know, little and thing. The, you know, where, where we just, that, you know. For the younger people that are watching this, we grew up in an era where the phones where somebody called, it was one phone at the house or, or, you know, it was one line, you could hear, if it was multiple phones, you could hear on the same line. Because, you know, kids now assume, might assume like, like oh, yeah, everybody had a phone. Everybody had a cell. Like, there was no cell. I don't know. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> These things were attached to your wall. 
Yeah, you're there in your kitchen, living room, or wherever, wherever you uh, put your house phone. But yeah, and uh, but yeah, he uh, he got really good. Uh, um, I was already good. I already had already mm-hmm. eight, eight, someone eight, nine years of experience already involved with scratching. I was already really to the point where I really understood the mechanism, how it worked. Mm-hmm. So. What I learned in eight years, he learned in six, seven months. Exactly like this. He was really, he was really fast. Yeah, because I never had taught anyone. Mm-hmm. He was pretty, basically, you can consider him my first student, I guess, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. But literally on the phone, I was um, crafting his scratching because I remember when he first started scratching over the phone, I go, man, that sounds terrible. I go, we're, we're going to need a lot of work, you know, because he's just beginning, you know, he's, yeah, he yeah. sounded like crap. And it's funny because I can still sort of remember him doing that, like, you know, him scratching. It just sounded like, you know, that's not like him to sound like crap. Right. So, you know, he's good, you know. So. Uh, but it's funny. Uh, little by little, though, he, he's he's a very fast learner. He's, yeah. he's like me. You know, I, I picked up something. I'll learn it very fast. And he was the only other guy that that had that in him mm-hmm. out of all the. DJs, etc., that I met in the last nine years when I first started, he was the only guy. He was the first guy that I ever met who was into what I was doing, but caught it very fast. Mm. He was a very fast learner. His scratching started sounding better, more tighter. Then he started just making things up on his own, which was cool. Mm. So, as soon as he got to a level where he was like, I was like, I'll, even he was impressing me, like, wow, he's really freaking good. You know, like he he advanced very fast and he understood it very fast. Mm. So we, I immediately threw, threw him the idea, you know, we should start working together. And he was in all in it for, for good. But uh, during that time, he, that's when he started his mobile DJ crew and they started getting mm. known. I, I sort of veered off for a while. I took a year break. Personal stuff, you know, I was 17, 18, street kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I sort of came back, he already had met, I think, Apollo. Mm. and Mike so I was sort of late for mm. that 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 group thing that I wanted mm-hmm. to do with him mm-hmm. so he was already obligated you know he already had his thing going you know with those mm-hmm. guys so so we couldn't start that thing we 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 were talking about you know putting a whole a whole you know an all scratch crew mm-hmm. um oh, wait, so wait, wait, wait before, th- before we continue let me pause because yeah. I've only used, this is my second time using Zoom, and I heard there's only, because this is like the free version, I hope there's only 40 minutes. So let okay. me I'm end this one and start, and I'm going to send you a new link, and then we're going to start up again. Okay, sounds good. All right, good. Boom, all right, cool. So we're back. So we were at, uh, you were talking about uh, uh, you um, had heard that uh, you were training Qbert, and then you had heard that he was building with, like, Apollo yeah, that was like two years after. So we're going around, mm-hmm. I think, when is it? 89? I can't remember. Yeah, I know he had t- been talking to Mike since, I think, 88, something like that. Mm. And then 89, and then that's when they started hooking up together. And mm. I was kind of very, I was very off doing other stuff, uh, working with uh, MCs and mm. mm-hmm. just uh, experimenting. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I did all these little side projects at the time working with MCs locally, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, you were making beats um, as well? or uh, I was just mainly, I mainly was doing scratching. Mainly. Oh, so you just, were scratch beats and they, were, and they were rapping over the scratch beats or you were scratching on a track that was already... Oh, completed. scratching on a track. Yes, scratching oh, on a track. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I kind of did that for a little while because, um, you know, Cuba and those guys had their thing going. He had the FM20, the, his, mm-hmm. his two MCs, and then obviously he had Apollo Mike. So... As they were doing that, I was I was uh, working with local acts. Actually, I mm-hmm. got to release a few few things uh, with some of the local guys. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I was just continuing um, to practice during the nineties, mm-hmm. um, um, etc. And then uh, see ninety one, ninety two. I was sort of competing around that time too. Mm. I remember competing oh, also to uh, there was local local DJ battles. Mm-hmm. This was from 80, 87, 88 to around maybe ninety two. I was mm-hmm. kind of in that competition zone, so I was doing mm-hmm. some local stuff and uh, um, 
uh, which was cool because mm -hmm. I, I, uh, it almost made me feel like, okay, that, that first performance, you know, like uh, what I was doing, they go, mm -hmm. you know, this fits with what I'm, with what I'm doing. They go, you got all these guys now that are popping up with this sort of same style, only, you know, they got different things going. It's more like this scratch battle thing.